Section 1 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross The Dark Night I departed in the darkness With the pains of love oppressed Happy lot, for none observed me All my house was then at rest By the ladder that is secret In the darkness on I pressed Through the night disguised in safety All my house was then at rest Unobserved and unobserving In the silent blissful night And in my heart the fire burning Was my only guide and light To the place where he was waiting Safely guided on the way On I went, the light was brighter Than the sunshine of midday Night that led to my beloved Guide and light upon the way And made us one Night more lovely than the dawn of coming day. On my breast with flowers covered, which for him alone I kept, I caressed him, and the cedars, waving, fanned him while he slept. When his tresses were disordered by the motion of the air, then I fainted, and he struck me with his hand so soft and fair. Self-forgetting, there I rested on my love reclined my head, all anxieties discarded, mid the lilies round me spread. End of section one. Section two of Poetry of St. John of the Cross, Song of the Soul and its Bridegroom. O oh my love, where art thou hiding? Why hast thou forsaken me? Thou hast left me to my sorrow, to bewail my loss of thee. Thou hast wounded me, and swiftly as the heart hast fled away, I pursued thee, crying loudly, Thou wert gone, and wouldst not stay. O ye shepherds, I entreat you, as you wend your watchful way, to the hill amid the sheepcots, every night and every day. Tell my love, if you shall see him, of the state in which I lie, of my longing, and in longing, that I languish, pine, and die. In my quest of him no mountains, nor wide plains shall me delay. I will never stoop to gather even a flower on the way. I will cross the frontiers boldly, nor shall giants hold me back, and if savage beasts surround me, I shall dread not their attack. O ye trees of trackless forest, and ye thickets of the land, shade and shelter for the weary, planted by his loving hand. O ye meadows fresh and verdant, pictures of the land above, decked with flowers bright and fragrant, tell me, have you seen my love? The creatures answer. We have seen him, we have seen him, oh, the beauty of his face, moving through the groves and pouring down the treasures of his grace. Hastening on, he looked upon them, oh, that look, how full of love, and the groves became more lovely with a beauty from above. The Bride I am wounded, who can heal me, sorrow-laden, lone, and sad, longing for thy wanted presence that alone can make me glad? Come thyself, and do not tarry, send no messengers to me, they are powerless to tell me aught that I would know of thee. All who serve thee, men and angels, each in his determined place, speak to me with voice unceasing of thy comeliness and grace. They but make my wound still greater. There is that beyond my reach, and leaves me sad. What I know not, for they stammer in their speech. O oh, my life, how thou persistest in continuing the strife! For by living on thou livest, where is not thy real life. All thou knowest of thy lover are as arrows in thy heart, sent to slay thee. Then how is it? Thou abidest as thou art. My beloved, thou hast planted in my heart the darts of love, 
Why dost thou refuse to heal it with the unction from above? Now that thou hast robbed me of it, I in desolation left, why hast thou not taken it with thee, and thus perfected the theft? Tribulations overwhelm me, by anxieties oppressed, thou alone canst free me from them, therefore give me peace and rest. Let mine eyes then look upon thee, for it is by thee they see, they are thine, and thou hast made them, I will keep them all for thee. O oh, that thou the clouds wouldst scatter, that between us darkly lie, show thy face, and in the beauty of the vision let me die. For the beatific vision that makes glad the saints above is the only perfect healing of the malady of love. Crystal spring of limpid waters, unexhausted in its flow, O oh, that on thy silvered surface as a mirror thou wouldst show unto me those eyes so lovely and which I so long to see, for their image is already outlined on my heart from thee. My beloved, look not at me with those eyes so full of love. I am flying, overpowered. The Bridegroom O oh, return to me, my dove, on the hill the heart is looming, and the arrow to it clings, in the air refreshed that stirreth by the motion of thy wings. The Bride My beloved is the mountains, they reveal him unto me, and the lonely wooded valleys with the islands of the sea, strange and lovely, and the murmur of the waters as they flow, and the sweet entrancing whisper of the winds that softly blow. My beloved is the silent, tranquil night before the morn, ere the ruddy dawn approaches and another day is born. He is music that is soundless, in the wilderness a voice, and the supper that refresheth, making hearts that love rejoice. Who will catch for us the foxes that so cunningly repair to the vineyard thou hast planted, now so fruitful and so fair? While we move among the flowers, and our hands with roses fill, for the making of a garland, let none appear on the hill. Chilling north wind, from thy caverns send no more the blasts that kill. Come thou south wind, love enkindling, and the air with odors fill. There among the fragrant flowers my beloved will abide, and will feed among the lilies in the garden of his bride. Now the rose trees and the flowers bloom and blossom in their beds, and around the fragrant amber its delicious perfume sheds. Nymphs of Judah, come not nigh us in the suburbs still remain, that ye may not touch the threshold of our house, your feet restrain. Hide thyself then, my beloved, and let none thy presence trace. Keep for me alone the secret, to the mountains turn thy face. But with loving eyes regarding, look on those who wait on me, on my way among the islands of a strange and stormy sea. The Bridegroom Cruel lions of the forest, crouching in their secret lair, fawns and does so wild and restless in all the birds of the air, Nightly terrors that alarm us, gloomy valleys, lowly plain, Burning heat and lofty mountains, howling winds and driving rain. By the music of the viols, by the siren's soothing strain, I adjure you and command you from your fury to refrain. Cease your clamors, come not nigh us, at a distance still abide, And occasion no disturbance of the slumbers of the bride. Now the garden sheds its perfume, for the winter's cold is past, and the bride in all her beauty has come into it at last. There content among the lilies, in the everlasting arms, she is tranquilly reposing, henceforth free from all alarms. When I saw thee wan and weary, underneath the apple tree, I held out my hand in pity, and betrothed me unto thee. When thy mother deluded fell, in the snare the traitor laid, there the price of thy redemption in my bitter death was paid. The Bride 
Dens of lions are the fences that protect the bridal bed, hung with purple, fragrant flowers all around their perfume shed. It was wrought in peace and quiet, who will touch it, none so bold, for its manifold adornments are a thousand shields of gold. They are running in thy footsteps on the road which thou didst tread, in the odor of the ointment that was poured upon thy head. The burning fire now has touched them, and the inner furnace glows, and the strengthening wine is tasted while the heavenly balsam flows. My beloved gently led me by the hand, O love divine, placed me in the inner cellar where I drank the wondrous wine. Coming forth I wandered lonely o'er the plain and knew no more, having lost the flock I followed in the days that went before. He embraced me there and taught me, sitting humbly at his feet, wondrous secrets of his wisdom, and the learning is so sweet. There I also made a promise I would be his faithful bride, true and constant, by that promise I will steadfastly abide. My beloved is my bridegroom, and my Lord, oh, what a joy! I will henceforth all the powers of my soul for him employ. And the flock that once I tended, now I tend not as before, for my only occupation is to love him more and more. I have gone away forever from the haunts of idle men, and a sharer in their follies I will never be again. They may say, and say it loudly, I am lost, but I am not. I was found by my beloved. Oh, how blessed is my lot. We will go in early morning, while the dew is on the ground, to the garden where the flowers in their beauty may be found, and will make a garland of them in which emeralds shall shine, knit and bound and held together by a single hair of mine. By that single hair that fluttered on my neck and seen by thee, thou didst look again upon it and wert by it drawn to me. Thou wert made a willing captive, weak and slender though it be, and I dared to look upon thee, and in looking, wounded thee. While on me thine eyes were resting, full of sweet and gracious love, they impressed on me their beauty, heavenly beauty from above. Then thy love flowed in upon me, and mine eyes obtained the grace that they saw in thee to worship. Oh, the beauty of thy face! I was once unclean and swarthy, in a miserable plight, Yet I pray thee not to spurn me, or to cast me from thy sight. Of my former degradation there remaineth not a trace, for thine eyes have rested on me, shedding comeliness and grace. The Bridegroom The little dove, white and stainless, wings her way returning now, to the ark of safety, bearing in her mouth the olive bough. Now her melancholy cooings will the turtle dove abate on the verdant banks rejoicing in the presence of her mate. Now the little dove was living in her solitude at rest, for in solitude, contented, she had built herself her nest. The beloved had been leading into solitude the dove, and in solitude was wounded with the arrows of her love. The Bride in our common love rejoicing, my beloved, let us go to the summit of the mountain whence the limpid waters flow, to the hill of contemplation, there each other to behold. In thy beauty let us enter into mysteries untold. We will go at once together, my beloved and his bride, to the dark and secret caverns of the rock and there to hide into those mysterious caverns where no earthly light can shine, we will enter there in secret, we will taste the heavenly wine. For within those secret caverns thou thyself wilt show to me that which I am always longing in my inmost heart to see. In the innermost recesses of the caverns thou wilt give what the other day thou gavest, O my life, in thee I live. I shall breathe the air that quickeneth, and the nightingale shall sing. In my raptured ear the music of her voice shall sweetly ring. Pleasant grove in all its beauty, with the marvels it contains, in the night, with the fire burning 
that consumes and never pains. I went in with my beloved, seen by no created eye, nor with all his strength and cunning durst Aminadabad come nigh. Then the siege was intermitted, then abandoned by the foe, and the cavalry dismounted when it saw the waters flow. End of section 2 Section 3 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross The Living Flame of Love O living flame of love, how painless is the smart Thy tender wounds create within my very heart. O end at last the weary strife and break the web of this my life. O gentle hand in touch, O wound in sweetness rife, O burning, a foretaste of everlasting life. The debt is paid that long was due, and death by death brings life anew. O lamps of fire that burn, illumining the night, sense in its caverns glows with unaccustomed light. They once were dark, but now are bright, and to my love give warmth and light. How loving thou dost lie, Awake within my breast, And by thyself alone, In secret there at rest, The sweetness of thy blissful breath Makes strong my love, And strong as death. End section 3 Section 4 A soul longing for the vision of God I live, and yet not I, In a manner hoping that I am dying because I am not dead. I am not now living in myself, and without God I cannot live, for without Him I am also without myself. This life of mine, what is it? A thousand deaths to me, for I am waiting for my very life, dying because I am not dead. This life that I am living is a lifeless life, and so a death continuing, until I come to live with thee. God, hear thou my cry. This life of mine I will it not. I die, because I am not dead. When I am away from thee, what is my life to me? The agony of death. None greater have I ever seen. O oh, wretched that I am, for while I am living on, I die because I am not dead. The fish that from the water leapeth is not without relief. The death that it endures does end in death at last. What death can ever equal my misery of life? For I, the more I live, the more I die. When I see thee in the sacrament and begin to be relieved, the absence of fruition creates a deeper pang. All brings greater pain, and the pain is so bitter that I am dying because I am not dead. And if, O oh Lord, I have a joy in the hope of seeing Thee, my sorrow is increased because I fear to lose Thee. Living in dread so great and hoping as I hope, I die because I am not dead. From this death deliver me, O God, and give me life, nor let these fetters hold me, they are so strong. Behold, I die to see thee, and in a manner hoping that I am dying because I am not dead. My death I will bewail then, and lament my life, by reason of my sins still here prolonged. O oh my God, when shall I be there, where I may truly say, I live at last, because I am not dead. End of section 4